Today I am in Dubai in five music studios. It's awesome as you can see and I wanted to pick apart one of the biggest electronic music producers of all time and see if there are any secrets he's used to help him achieve the insane levels of success he's had with his music. The artist in question is of course Dead Mouse. Turns out there are six things he does in his music and in his career that you can start applying today to help your music blow up. So in this video I'm going to be creating a track from scratch in the style of the absolute classic Cascade and Dead Mouse's I Remember. But I want to see if you can see what these secrets are so as and when you think you come across them just write them in the comments below this video and as usual you could also download the project file all the samples completely free so without further ado let's hop into the door and get it done cool okay nice let's do it that's archie by the way archie sorted this out right dead mouse in the house first thing we want to do is set the tempo and we're going to set 128 because it's dead mouse and everything he's ever made is 128 bpm we are going to work out the chords first and much like i remember we want to have borrowed chords and if that sounds a bit too wizardy for you don't worry i will explain it so every track that you write is going to be in one particular key and that means that's its musical home so if we were to write the track in f sharp minor and if we hit the scale button, all these notes are within F sharp minor. Using a borrowed chord from the parallel scale just means that we're going to use some chords from F major instead of F minor. And that's going to give it this really heart meltery feel. That is a technical term, by the way. So I've jammed out some chords already prior to this. So they're the three that we're going to use. Now this time I'll try and program them in correctly. So I'm just skipping a note each time once you're in scale mode. Like easy peasy. Look at that. Easy, looks simple, sounds absolutely amazing. And then we'll ch just change to this borrowed chord so you can see we're actually using notes from without the scale. These dark notes in between the blue ones, you can see we are using some of them. So we're using that from the scale, that not from the scale, that from the scale, then that not from the scale. And then you get that absolutely heart melter effect. Nice. And then we're just going to bring up these bottom two notes of the chord to here, I think. And uh, no, it's this one and that one. And then we'll keep these two the same. So we're just bringing it back home. So it's really simple, but that is a hallmark of Dead Mouse's music. Not so much that it's simple, but that it will just have one core idea that's executed really well. So now I'm not saying this is executed really well, it is, but this is the chord progression we're going to use. Lovely. So magic list, magic list. What do we need to do? We need to get the dead mouse pluck in the house. So what I'm going to do is just use the exact same chords. I'll use a serum because I know a lot of you guys and girls use serum. And that's what we teach in the accelerator as well, because it's kind of easy to navigate, easy to show you what go on. So now we've got this serum. We're just going to use these exact chords. In fact, we can copy and paste them and then just turn them into 16th plucks. So we'll turn that down, get that out of the way. And you can see here the grid is set to 16th, which is good. Just what the doctor ordered. In fact, unlike that Red Bull I'm drinking, which he probably didn't order me to drink, but I'm enjoying it. So hey ho. Now we're just going to repeat these notes on every single 16th. So I made that a bit short. There we go. Let's do it. Boom. Forgot to do it with the top one. Don't hold us against me. We'll get it done. And we'll just follow that exact same pattern. Now you'll note with these chords, they're actually changing just before the beat. So the downbeat is here. Uh, but that's going to keep the groove going. If we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what we're trying to do, just to push the groove forward in the track. Let's just repeat those notes. And then these four here as well. We might add an extra note on top of them because that first chord's got five. The other ones are feeling a bit left out. Let's hear if it's correct. Ah, this is supposed to be eighths, not sixteenths. Taxi, never mind. It's good for you. And a little bit of mistake making never hurt anyone. Not sure if that's technically true, but I'll stick with it for now. Okay. Now, we just want this to be on every eighth. So all I'm doing is just copying and repeating it. And that's going to give that pluck sound. Well, it's going to give the pluck pattern. Now we're going to work on the sound. The way we do that is 
put a filter on it first and foremost, take down the sustain, make it a bit pluckier, like that. Add that filter to the envelope as well. Almost. Drop it down an octave, I think. Add some unison. And you've got yourself a dead mouse plug. So we need to name this bad boy. Dead mouse, what are we going to call you? I remember. Well, as I did earlier with the 16th, I forgot. So I'm going to call this I forget. Happens to the best of us. So now we've got these chord plucks in place. We need to add the kick. We need that big fat dead mouse kick. So I'm going to go for one that I basically just ripped from his track earlier because it's going to fit this perfectly. You can do that. I hope. I hope I'm not going to get done for copyright, but I'm sure he nicked it from a sample pack. So hey ho. And obviously we need this on every beat. Like so. Simple as that. Nice, but we need to add the side chain compression, which is basically ducking that chord in time with the kick, and that allows the kick to pop too. And that's very, you know, very indicative of the dead mouse sound that everything's basically pumping against the kick. So I'll just throw a compressor on the plucks, open up this side chain section here and take the input from my side chain trigger. Now you could use the LFO tool or shaper box to do this. You don't actually need to use a side chain compressor, but the idea is we're just ducking it in time with the kick. So I've got a really short, sharp tick sample that I've got set to sends only. So you never actually hear it. It just triggers this side chain compressor, which we're going to have do this. And with the kick, it'll make more sense. Nice. So we're starting to get that dead mouse sound already. Maybe I can put this down an octave. No, that's too low. Okay, cool. So magic list, magic list. What do you say to me? You say to me, we need the auxiliary channel because that's what's going to give us, again, that really dead mouse feel by careful routing and choosing the order in which you put those plugins because that makes all the difference. So I'm going to create a dedicated auxiliary channel for this. I'm going to call this Pluck Dell. I'm going to color it pale synth, the natural color of synths, auxiliary channels. Next thing I need to do is add a delay unit. I'm going to use Echo, really cool, but it doesn't matter which one you use. And I'll set this to notes and probably eighths. Let's have a listen. Feed some out. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So it's just playing that pattern so that when we have this kind of effect, where we open up that filter over time, which we will be getting to in a few minutes, we can actually hear the delay still play that, that higher cutoff, if you will. Let's put the feedback up a tiny bit. Okay, boom. Next thing we need to do is get the rest of the claps in there because getting the kicks working together is, or getting the drums working together rather, is really key to getting that dead mouse sound. Really simple, layered, tight drums that you don't need to overcomplicate things in it's going to depend on the genre, of course, but we're focusing on this kind of stripped back, really clean sounding, pumping house vibe. So let's look for a couple of claps. And I think what I'm going to do is use... Yeah, that's cool, but it's a bit long. So what we can do is actually shape that clap. And this is something that I'm really a big believer in lately, which is finding something that's hitting the right frequencies, got the right timbre. And in terms of the shape and the length of it, you can just shape that, you know, you could increase the attack, just decrease the length of this, which is what I'm going to do, uh, to make it really short and snappy. So let's just program that in on every other kick, like so. Let's get all the beats playing now. But we want this to be much shorter, so we can do this. We've already shortened it down. So, and let's open up this pluck as well. Ah, 
Ah, uh, I know why it sounds weird, because these have got the gaps in between them. So let's select them all and hit legato, and this is going to sound 100% better. 100% better. That's a big percentage difference. See, much smoother. Yes. Let's listen to it on the barefoots. Yeah, nice. If I keep doing that though, it's gonna come through the, through the microphone. Oh, we could try that. Let's see how it sounds. It's an experiment. I'll just do it kind of quiet, so hopefully it doesn't completely mess up the mix. Okay, next thing we have is the rest of the drums. So let's layer up this clack. First and foremost, we get another one in there. Nice and short and snappy. Which one did we look at earlier? That one, cool. So let's just layer that up and we're gonna add a little bit of pre-transient to this. So it kind of sounds like it's a group of humans clapping together because they're not hitting at exactly the same time, like so. I'll leave this a bit too loud so you can really hear the difference. So that little short, sharp clap is happening just before the beat. And then the second one we can have play exactly on the beat. And that's just to add some variation and movement. We're always talking about this complexity or this simplicity on the other side of complexity. So it sounds simple, but it's just very carefully done. Like so. Now we can bring this down in volume a touch. Just a touch, mind. Nice, beginning to get some feels. Next thing we need to do is add some closed hats. So let's go into our closed hat options. That's kind of cool. I think I made a note of a couple ones I liked earlier, 100 and 103. Yeah, so we'll start with 100 and we're just gonna put this in between every other clap and every other kick rather. but I'm gonna add a little bit of variation in volume by taking the velocity down for the first one. And then every other one will just be a little bit louder. And then to add some more layers, I'm gonna just add one of these brighter hats on every other beat as well. Every other hat rather, like this. And that's just gonna really add some more dynamics and layering to the track. Just again, we're not having loads of complicated drums in here. They're playing the few important parts, but we're just layering them carefully. Nice. I really hope this isn't messing up the mic, actually. I'm open my headphones back on just to make sure. Okay, next thing we need to do is add a reverse clap because you've always got to have a reverse clap. So let's just go to claps and just go under reverse claps. Nice, that's a good one. And I'll just do this in audio so I've got extra control over the length of it, etc. And we'll just have it before the last clap, I think. Let's make it quieter. Oh, there's the last clap. And I want this to be short as well, like that. And really make it just kind of come in suddenly. Okay, we haven't done any mixing yet and it's already sounding pretty cool. Okay, next thing we have on the magic list is a clave or a clav, don't know how it's pronounced. Frankly, I don't care, but that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna go, it helps to know what the sounds are called. So if you can get au fait with standard sounds in production and music in general, it's gonna help because you kind of know what to go for. So we're gonna pitch this to be in tune with the track as well. That's gonna be really important. So we know the key, let's just, we only want one though, we don't want to do it too much. Never overdo the claves, that's my motto. That's going on my epitaph, right? Never overdo the claves. So we're just gonna have one. Um, that's kind of a cool place there. So let's just tune it now. I'll just loop this little part and tune that clave to the rest of the track. That's cool. I 
I think that's in tune as well. Because you could choose the root note, you could choose the fifth, you could choose the seventh, and it's still gonna sound good. So what we're gonna have to do here, if we want to feed this out to an aux channel, is open up the routing and this return section, right click and create return chain. And I'm gonna choose from my global reverbs here on the auxiliary channel. So I'll choose the whole reverb, now we can close this down, make sure this S button's turned on, and now I can just send out this, just the clave, not all of the drums, to that, to that reverb like that, see? And as you can hear, it sounds absolutely mind-blowing. Cool. So next thing we have to do is add some kind of shakers, because when the groove gets going on this track, as we're going to see in a few minutes when we get to the arrangement, we really want to get that 16th kind of groove going on. So we'll just create a shaker loop for this, but much like changing the shape of the sounds earlier, we don't need to use a shaker. We could just use a hat sound and then give it a bit of an attack and it's gonna change it from a t to a sh. So yeah, let's, let's try that. That's kind of cool. Let's use that one. So we'll do it manually in audio so you can see what's going on. But if we add that here and have a listen to it, just listen as I change the shape of that transient. So now it's more of a shaker kind of sound. So let's just program some 16th shakers. We don't want them hitting where the kick hits because if you can use composition to avoid clashing with the kick, that's even better than relying on a sidechain compressor. So we're gonna just have those go up on every 16th apart from where the kicks are hitting but you can see it you can hear it's a bit static isn't it like listen to that that's static that's the most static thing i've ever heard that's more static than my washing right so what we want to do is create that sidechain bounce with that as well so it's going to gel with the kick i'll just copy that same sidechain compressor we set up earlier stick it on there get on there get on the shakers and now we can hear that they are moving and bouncing. That's where they were before. Boring, worst thing I've ever heard. Amazing, best thing I've ever heard. So now we've got quite a nice little groove going on. And we want to add one more layer on these drums and we're gonna add a tambourine because why not? Tambourines, they get a bad rap, but you know, we love them. So let's go and find a tambourine. Just go to some loops. Uh, tambourine doesn't exist. Tambourines do exist. So this one, that's cool. So we're just going to drop this on and it's just going to add a, just a higher layer to these drums. And let's have a listen to what it sounds like. So they're not quite in time. So I'll go in, I'll warp it and I'll just tighten them up a bit like so kind of get it more on the grid. I could probably just grab it all like this and then go quantize, whatever the quantize shortcut is, which I can't remember. Quantize settings, there we go, boom. That's kind of cool, I like that. But we're just gonna have it really low in the mix. And I think we need to add some more of that sidechain bounce to it. I told you, 128 BPM, sidechain everything. There you go, you know all the secrets, that's dead mouse. And I think we'll take out some of the low end of that. So we'll do a tiny bit of mixing. Okay, next thing we need to do is, on my magic list, we need to work out the synth chords because we've got the chord notes here with the plug. But we need a nice big organ, so to speak, underneath it. So what we're gonna do is just copy that same sound from the plucks. I will get rid of the piano, I think. And then we're just gonna create our own organ stab, which is gonna be, have a much longer decay than that synth pluck. So let's just increase the decay, like so, and the release. Although we don't need to increase the release because they're not actually released. You can see they're sustained all the way. So 
So what we want to do is add another oscillator in there. I'm not really sure which one, we'll just kind of experiment and put in an octave up. Then we'll take everything down an octave because we want these to be a bit more, that's terrifying, that was literally terrifying. But we want these to be a bit more low frequencies oriented to fill up the frequency range. Nice. Oh, I'm going to have to listen to those out loud. Let's add some reverb on there. And we need the bass, of course. Let's get some bass on there. And it's all going to come together. So once again, we're keeping it simple. We don't need to create that many different like melody lines into playing with each other. We just need to have a simple idea executed really, really well. So we're going to take that up there and just use the first or the lowest note of each of these chords. Boom. Lovely, lovely jubbly. Get that in there. Get in there. And then we're going to basically use the same synth again. We're going to copy the serum and the compressor and create a short, sharp pluck, but a couple of octaves below. Otherwise, it wouldn't be bass. That would be insane. Already done, boom. And we'll take off the unison as well because we want to keep this nice and mono. Uh, keep a lot of control over this. That's sounding pretty good. And as I said, if you can kind of reduce what the sidechain compress is doing, so I'll just take out all of these bass notes where the kick is playing, it's just gonna mean that the sidechain compressor doesn't have to do all the work because those bass notes aren't even there, you know? Which is profound if you think about it. Sometimes I have to point out when I'm being profound, it's very easily missed. <sighs> nice. And now we can bring these chords in as well. Nice and quiet. But these chords need to be have a bit more body, so I'm going to take some of these notes down an octave. This would be a chord inversion, by the way. But those ones up there, I think, sound good. So we're just bringing those notes closer together on the keyboard. So it doesn't make that much sense on its own, but when it's got the bass as context, the chords make sense, right? But I'm also gonna add the root notes of those chords again, like an octave below, because I think they need that body. So they're nice and rich. Let's add a little bit of resonance and drive. And now we're going to go back to that routing that we looked at earlier. We've got one for the pluck, but we want a separate one for the chords. So let's call that chords delay. Again, light cyan, the natural color of chord delays. And then we need to add a similar delay to this really, but we just want to have the extra control of being able to process these separately. So let's have a listen. There we go, just what the doctor ordered. Let's listen to it here. And then we're gonna add the sidechain compressor on there as well for when the beats come in. And on the delayed signals as well. Everything's bouncing now in time with the beats. And now we're starting to get the groove. Okay, so there's not that much more to it really. We've got some arrangement to do and I want to find some female vocals as well because I remember obviously the female vocals just made that track really breathy, really floaty. So we're gonna use Splice to find them whilst having a sip of this. Again, I'm not sponsored by Red Bull, but thanks Red Bull. If you would like sponsorship, 
you can reach out to me if you like. Okay, splice, here we go. So what we need to do is search for what we want. Oh look, it's already done. Isn't that fortuitous? Female vocal, F minor, between this particular range. So let's have a listen to some of them whilst the track is actually playing. No. Actually, I like that one. Now, because we're using borrowed chords, so they're not all from within the scale of F sharp minor, you can run into trouble when trying to find some vocals that are going to fit that because you're kind of in effect switching key. But what we can do, if it's just a melody, we can, Take me to we can adjust some of the notes within it because we've got those magic skills, because we've got flex time in Logic, or you can warp it in Ableton. So let's warp it, Complex Pro, because that's the best algorithm for vocals, 122 BPM, so we need to make sure that's dialed in correctly. So it's gonna be in sync with our track. And I'm just gonna make sure, because here it looks like the vocal's hitting just after the beat. So I'm just gonna tweak the, where the beginning of the sample is until that's kind of in place, like that. So now it should fit. So that note there is wrong, but that's okay because we're going to fix it. So I'm just going to... That's where the note changes. So it's this note here that's the issue. So I'm just going to change the pitch of just that one vocal note. And I think that's it. I think we've done it by Jove. Let's have a listen. And we'll probably have to do the same thing there as well. So let's bring these chords to repeat a few times, like so. So we can just get this entire vocal working with it, like so. Don't like the first note either. I want that to be the do. So let's bring that up. That's it. That sounds way better. Nice. No. Too intense. Calm down. Calm down, love. No, don't like that bit either. So we can just use the bits that we like from the vocal. I like this bit though. That's cool. So again, we can tweak this much like we did the first part. Let's just bring it in time. I wanna go further. I wanna... So let's get that first note up. So this little bit here, see what's, see what's underneath my skin. All right, each to their own. But what we're gonna do is delay that on an auxiliary channel. That sounds weird, doesn't it? But hey ho, it'll do for now. So let's get that on there and let's throw in another another secret tip for Dead Mouse. I'm not using my notes to look at these. So actually, no, I've I've run out of them. We're gonna have to go with the other ones that I worked out earlier. So one of the ones that things that Dead Mouse does is he spent a lot of time practicing this stuff. So when he kind of blew up with Faxing Berlin and that album. You know, people, as they always do, said, oh, overnight success, all of that stuff. But actually, you know, he was doing that for years beforehand, spending time in radio station, spending time in a music studio, just just sucking it all in and doing lots and lots of practice. And then a bit later on, he actually started producing. He started producing library music as well. And there's nothing like having to get paid to do something properly to make you do something properly. So he got to... Yeah, just repeat that process over and over again and get better and better and better. So there's nothing that can substitute that really. So what sounds simple really does come from an awful lot of practice. So we're gonna put a delay on there and we're just gonna feed it out, feed this last vocal out as and when we need it. Highlight's cool, an incidental delay. Like so. 
But again, we're going to change it from dotted to note and probably keep it on eight. Let's put it to one fourth. And then just on that last bit, that's when we can feed her voice out to that sends channel, like so. But let's add some actual nice effects to these vocals because they're not nearly breathy enough or big enough. So we're going to create a dedicated auxiliary channel just for the vocals as well. And let's just call it vocal effect. And I think this is something definitely worth doing rather than sharing the vocal auxiliary channel with other instruments because it's such a core cool part of the track. So we need to get it sounding bang on. So let's do that. 100% wet because it's on an auxiliary channel. We don't want to double up the dry signal and then feed out the vocals. Now let's have a listen to the vocals on their own and just get them dialed in. Take me to Nirvana, a place with no more drama, a heaven where we've never been. Nice. So I'm going to add a compressor after that and take the sidechain input from that vocal. And that's just so we can duck it, the reverb, whilst the dry vocal singing. And that's going to allow it to pop through the mix a little bit more. And that's it, simple. We just add an EQ, make sure we take out the bass frequencies. Cut out some of that. Sounding pretty good. Okay, boom. Next thing we need to do is work on the arrangement because the way that these synths automate throughout the track is really going to give it, yeah, it's life. You know, the original of I Remember was nine and a half minutes long. And all that interest came from the automation and the arrangement because there weren't that many things in the track. So what we'll do is just copy and paste this a few times and work out how we might start off this track and how to introduce the vocals and I'm going to arrange it as I go. But first, let's add in a couple of effects, actually. So we've got some impacts and whatnot. So we'll have this be impact and this be riser. And I'll show you a couple of very cool tips in a second to kind of defy expectations, if you will. And we love to defy expectations. So I'm going to go and find a impact sound okay i probably didn't defy your expectations there i literally stated what we were looking for but hey ho we go for crashes i guess the cymbal crashes mm, don't like them let's go for effect sweeps sweeps down mm, no i want actual impacts let's actually search for impact I want something quite long that sounds terrible so we're not going to use that I'm sure, what did I use earlier? Hmm, I cannot remember. Okay, we'll just go for something from in here. This one, really long. I mean, we could add a reverb to this, which is gonna help. So let's turn off the, change the warp to Complex Pro and really drag this out. Really labor this. So it's gonna sound. We'll turn off all the other sounds at the moment because we want these to Whoops, emojis, no, they're not going to help. They rarely help anything. So what we're going to do to smooth this sound out is add a reverb on it, on the actual channel itself. And what that's going to do is take down some of those transient glitches that we've got in the sound and smooth the whole thing out. Like so. Let's add a compressor to make it much longer. and we can EQ it as well. And that's just gonna really drag everything together, like so. Now let's add a sidechain compressor to that. As I said, you gotta do it, let's do it. And now we've got that kind of dead mouse impact. Okay, cool. So let's see, should we have a pause? Let's see who's here. Probably not really. Let's continue. I 
Okay, so next thing we want to do is focus, focus. Let's bring a riser in here. So let's effect, amazing. Effect risers, swoops up, sweeps up. That's a good one, we're gonna use that. I think that's one I made earlier. So instead of having the impact play after this rise, we're just gonna use a delay to continue that rise of sound. And that's gonna kind of do the same job as an impact. So we've got this kind of effect. But what we want to do is, let's see where it gets to its absolute beat. It is there, yeah. What I'll do is actually take that and reverse it. That's cool, I love that. Let us warp it and extend it like so. Put the side chain compressor on there again. And then what we're gonna do is add a reverb sorry, a delay right on the channel itself, but actually I think we'll do it before the compressor. And this is just gonna be automated on just at the end of this riser, and it's gonna continue it into the drop section. So let's do that. Ping pong, again, we'll stick to dotted, sorry, notes, one eighth. Let's go automation and bring it up like this. So we can hear that continuing now. Let's keep the feedback up so it takes ages to die out. Let the high end come through. Like so. Oh, we need to keep the dry wet. That's why it's stopping too soon. That's what we wanted to do. Add some reverb there maybe make the feedback even higher. Cool, so now we've got an impact at the beginning and then we've got this kind of cool riser effect. So let's get this cooking. I think we need to make some of these chords a bit lower as well, but We'll do that as we're arranging it. So now we are going to actually arrange it, not just talk about it. And isn't that nice when things start to happen? And I think we will have the break about here, like so, which means that's where our dead mouse pluck is gonna start feeding in. So we don't need it yet. And we'll open up the filter over that time. We'll save those cool drums for afterwards because we want something to lead into the break. And let's take out these extra hi-hats at the moment. And we'll just bring those in here. And we've got the closed hats, which we don't need yet either. We'll keep the reverse clap in because we're feeling generous. But something terrible's happened and we've turned the kick off. So let's bring it up to the top where in his rightful domain is king of the dance music track is being rethroned. Here we go. Let's have a sip whilst we arrange. And then we'll go and automate this filter from right down because that's where we want how we want to introduce the sound. No, I don't like that, and I'll tell you why. Because we've filtered this down before it's being sent out to the delay, which means we can't even hear the delay. So we're gonna leave this filter actually up, like so. It's at the highest point it could ever be, which is there, so let's.
And then what we're going to do, so we can still get that really cool delay that's not completely filtered out, I'm going to group this and I'm going to call this chords. And actually I want to add some more depth to this, so I will add a piano back in there, despite what I said earlier, because I'm a goddamn maverick. So let's put the piano in there. And we are going to use the same chords as the plucks, which are the same chords as the, the sustained ones but without the chord inversion. So let's just kind of revert the inversion, if you will, which I know is a mind-blowing concept, but it's happening. So now we'll put piano sound on there. I really like contact, but today I'm going to use the just the one that comes with Ableton so that you guys and girls can actually download it and use it straight away. Let's have a listen. Jazzy. That's nice. Immediate niceness. So let's layer that with this chord. And listen to the extra body it brings. I'm going to have to have a moment, actually. Lush. And then we can filter down the group, which is going to allow the delays to go out first. So let's just tone them down a bit. They're a bit rambunctious. Chord delays. Most. Let's open up the cutoff a little bit. No. That's the one. Nice. Back. I'm going back in. Cool. So now we can open these up as we get to that part in the track. Like so. Kind of deep. So what we need, I think, is a bit, a bit more of a delay on that, a, a, a side chain pump I mean. So let's put those pianos there as well, and then we're going to continue this arrangement. There's a piano coming in. chain pump on that reverb as well. And let's open this up. back to the and then we can go back to the kind of low down bit and the vocals will come in so so it's going to do something like that I'm actually going to open up this decay as well this is what happens here I get excited and then I just I go off on one I want to keep working on it but it's all good it's all good so let's open this up now as we get to the end of that section Yes. Whoops. There we go. 
And where's the cutoff? There we go. So it started off a bit low, I think. And remember, we can also filter out the low end with an EQ afterwards as we get to the top of this break to make the impact bigger. Same with the chords. This little fellow here. Compress this a little bit. So these drums we could not play yet and say they could come in here. And then the field starts opening up. So there you have it guys. I want to know, did you guess what those six secrets are? I can't remember if I said five at the beginning, but if I did, I meant six. Let's go through them. So the first is that Dead Mouse, aka Joel, got involved in the industry from an early age. He used to hang around with DJs, used to hang around in a radio station and a recording studio and just pick up and learn the equipment and learn production skills. He would skip school to do this. I'm not suggesting that you should do that, but my point is he immersed himself around people interested in the same thing that he was passionate about and put himself in environments where he could really start to learn these skills. Number two is that he got a lot of work in before he blew up to success. Not only was he working in the music studio picking up tips and helping them, he also started creating library music as well to sell to people making websites so they could have tunes on their website. It's very easy to think that someone just blows up to success but there's always always a lot of work that goes behind the scenes and it's usually if not always driven by a passion and a love for learning and for making music. So let's dig into the production techniques themselves. Secret number three, Joel's tracks always have one main core theme or idea. It can be very tempting to throw in lots of different ideas into each track, but all the best tracks really just do one thing very well, and everything else in the track has to work towards the same theme. I call this simplicity on the other side of complexity, because you have simplicity when you're just starting out, you don't have much going on in your track, and it doesn't sound very good. Then we tend to add too much stuff because we're thinking, why doesn't our music sound full? But on the other side of that is when you apply the tech techniques very carefully and very specifically apply layering and sample selection to create something that sounds really full and rich but is only really trying to do a couple of things really really well and one of those things that Joel does really really well is secret number four four which is being very specific about the routing of the tracks and the order in which plugins are placed. Because if you put a filter before a reverb compared to after a reverb, it's going to have a different sound. If you put a saturator after a reverb as opposed to before a reverb, again, it's going to have a different sound. So try and learn what the signal path is doing and how each effect is affecting it. When you learn that, you can really start to experiment, automating things out to send channels, using sidechain compression to get everything gelling together and Talking of gelling everything together, that brings me on to the branding. I mean, he's got a freaking massive mouse head. Of course, the music had to be excellent for Joel to blow up, but having a really strong brand that people could identify straight away has definitely helped. Which takes me on to the bonus tip, which may not have helped him, but I think it probably has, which is basically being really, really outspoken. He's got himself into some right bothers, but you know, boy don't care, does he? Fair play. If there's controversy, there's also interest, there's also attention. So I actually think it's really helped him. I'm not suggesting you jump on Twitter and start slagging people off, but isn't that what people do on Twitter anyway? I don't know. Now, of course, Joel is just one of a whole slew of very successful, very prolific music producers. So if you want to see how David Guetta blow up to his enormous level of success, you can check this video out here where we break apart some of his secrets and his music production techniques. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit like, hit subscribe, and I will catch you over at that next video.